when the government tries to control the Avengers, Iron Man and Captain America choose different sides and start a war between the superheroes. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Captain America, Civil War, from 2016. In Nigeria, the Avengers learn of a possible crossbones attack and are on the outskirts waiting to take action. While his team is spying, Captain America spots a suspicious garbage truck and asks Falcon to send one of his drones to investigate. When he gets under the vehicle, Sam activates the X-ray and discovers that the driver is armed, as well as discovering that the truck is over the maximum weight, signaling that the vehicle is going to be used as a battering ram. As he approaches a military base, the driver throws himself out of the truck and knocks down the barricade, making way for a group of criminals to break in. After putting everyone to sleep with sleeping gas, the bandits enter the building and go to the laboratory at the top, where they steal a bottle of a chemical weapon. Just then, the Avengers arrive and start fighting the soldiers outside, knocking them all out. With the way clear, Cap goes to the lab and asks Wanda to remove the gas with her powers, but he arrives too late and Crossbones is already outside. Black Widow gets on a motorcycle and goes after the criminals, but ends up being caught by the villain who throws her into an armored vehicle along with a grenade, forcing Natasha to use one of the criminals as a human shield. With all the heroes down, Crossbones hands the vial to one of his soldiers and says they must split up if they want to escape. At a nearby fair, everyone takes off their equipment and starts running through the crowd, forcing the heroes to search for them. While looking near the armor, the captain is hit by an adhesive bomb that gets stuck in the shield, forcing him to throw the piece of vibranium up in the air. After the explosion, Crossbones appears and starts attacking Steve in the middle of the crowd, landing several punches. Nearby, Natasha is chasing one of the criminals and manages to take him down, wrestling two of them at once. Even on her own, the Black Widow is far more skillful and manages to defeat them both, forcing one of the men to use the biological weapon to threaten her. As the criminal orders her to drop the gun, Falcon's drone arrives and knocks the thug out with the serum, forcing Natasha to grab the vial before it hits the ground. In the middle of the fair, Steve continues to fight Crossbones and manages to take him down. With the villain on the ground, Captain America asks who the buyer is and the villain replies that it was Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier. As soon as he gives the information, Crossbones tries to blow himself up along with Steve, but Wanda manages to restrain him and throw the villain upwards, causing him to crash into a building that is completely destroyed. Away from the action, Tony Stark gives a lecture on inventions to a group of university students and announces that he will finance their project. After the performance, Tony is leaving the building when he meets a woman in front of the elevator. As soon as she sees the billionaire, she hands him a photo of her son and tells him that Tony eliminated him in Sokovia while fighting Ultron. The woman then says that Iron Man shouldn't be considered a hero and says that it's all his fault. At Avengers headquarters, Stark appears accompanied by General Ross, who has now become Secretary of State. With the superheroes reunited, the former general says that in recent years they have been acting without supervision and that governments can no longer tolerate this. He then tells them that 117 countries have come together to approve the Treaty of Sokovia, which nationalizes the Avengers so that they can only act if the UN deems it necessary. Steve protests and Ross asks about the whereabouts of Thor and the Hulk, saying that it would be the equivalent of losing two atomic bombs. Finally, Ross says that the UN will meet in Vienna to validate the treaty, stating that if they don't agree to nationalization, they will be banned from continuing to act. After the secretary leaves, the Avengers continue to debate what to do and Steve leads the group that is against this UN control. While everyone is debating amongst themselves, Tony shows the photo that the woman gave him and says that the man had a degree in computer engineering. Because of his dedication, he was hired by Intel, but before starting work he wanted to have a different experience, so he spent the summer in Sokovia, where he was helping to build houses for needy families. Tony then says that he had a promising future, but that they'll never know why they brought a building down on him in the fight against Ultron. Finally, Stark says that they must take responsibility and that if they don't, they are just like the villains. While the Avengers are debating amongst themselves, Steve receives a text message saying that Peggy has died and decides to drop everything to go to the funeral. After the ceremony, Natasha arrives to talk to Steve and tells him that some of the Avengers have already signed the treaty, including her. The woman then tells him that she is going to Vienna to sign the treaty and says goodbye to her friend, flying to Austria. There, Natasha meets Prince T'Challa of Wakanda. After a brief conversation, the meeting begins and King T'Chaka begins his speech of thanks. While his father promises Wakanda's cooperation, T'Challa looks out of the window and notices a suspicious movement outside, shouting for everyone to get down on the ground. However, he isn't quick enough to save his father, who ends up being hit by the explosion. In the United States, Steve watches the news about the event and discovers that Bucky was responsible. In Vienna, 
Black Widow approaches Prince T'Challa, who is wearing the Ring of Wakanda, promising to eliminate the Winter Soldier with his bare hands. Following the clues, Captain America manages to find Bucky's apartment and decides to go there to talk to him. As soon as he sees his old friend, the Winter Soldier says that he wasn't in Vienna and that he doesn't do that kind of thing anymore. Suddenly, several grenades are thrown through the window and Interpol breaks into the apartment, forcing Captain America to protect his old friend. Despite being trained soldiers, the military don't stand a chance against Bucky, who knocks everyone out on the stairs. With the way clear, Barnes jumps to the top of a building where he begins to be attacked by the Black Panther. Since he has no interest in fighting, Bucky simply drives the hero of Wakanda and continues trying to escape down in the city streets. Being chased by Black Panther, Captain America and Interpol at the same time. In the middle of the escape, Steve Rogers steals one of the police cars and speeds off in the direction of Bucky, but the Black Panther realizes what he's done and decides to hitch a ride. At this point, Bucky decides to steal a motorcycle and continue his motorized escape, but T'Challa jumps on him and almost knocks him down. With his vibranium arm, Barnes manages to stop the fall and throw the Black Panther backwards, blowing up the ceiling of the tunnel with a grenade to block the passage. Despite this, King T'Challa kept after him and almost eliminated him, only to be stopped by Captain America at the last second. Just then, the police arrive and War Machine shows up to arrest them all. At the Austrian Defense Headquarters, a psychiatrist arrives to interrogate Barnes and starts asking questions about what happened. Far away, a delivery man leaves a package for one of the energy company employees. As soon as he receives notification that the package has been delivered, the psychiatrist activates a mechanism that causes an explosion at the power station, knocking out the electricity to the entire city. When the power goes out, the cops start running towards Bucky and the captain follows. Until they arrive, the psychiatrist says he wants to talk about his real home and shows them that he has the Winter Soldier's Red Book, reading the words that put Bucky under his control. When he arrives at the place, Steve approaches the supposed psychiatrist and ends up being surprised by Bucky, who knocks him into the elevator shaft. While the captain tries to climb back up, Tony tries to confront Barnes, but he's not wearing his armor and is soon knocked out, leaving T'Challa with the job of fighting the villain. Even without his armor, the Black Panther is extremely skilled and manages to knock Barnes down from a height of almost three stories, but when he gets down, he realizes that the villain has disappeared in front of everyone. On the helipad at the top of the building, Bucky is trying to take off when Steve arrives and manages to grab the helicopter with his arm, forcing Bucky to throw the aircraft at him. After the impact, the Winter Soldier grabs the captain's neck and falls with him into a nearby canal, forcing Steve to save his friend, who collapses. While all this is going on, the undercover psychiatrist is watching the news about Barnes' escape and decides to fly to Moscow. Far away, Bucky finally regains consciousness and Steve starts asking questions about what the psychiatrist wanted. Bucky then tells him that the villain is called Baron Zemo and that he wants to know about a mission in 1991, where the Winter Soldier crashed a car into a tree and stole a shipment of super serum. Thinking he wants to control other superhumans, Steve suggests calling Tony and Sam says that's not a good idea, saying they should go it alone from now on. Unaware of any of these discoveries, Stark argues with Ross that he now sees Captain America as a villain, saying that he won't hesitate to shoot him. Tony then says he'll deal with it on his own and asks for a day to solve the problem. Wanting to get reinforcements, Tony goes to Peter Parker's house and shows him some footage of Spider-Man, saying that he has talent. Although he tries to deny it at first, after a while Peter admits that he is a superhero and Tony says he wants to recruit him to the team, helping him with an upgrade to his costume and web-slinger. At the Avengers base, an explosion occurs nearby and Vision decides to go out to investigate. After he leaves, Hawkeye appears and calls Wanda to come with him, saying it's time to act. Just then, Vision reappears and takes advantage of his intangibility to pierce Clint's arrows and steal his bow. Even without his main weapon, Hawkeye continues to try to fight, but is completely overwhelmed by Vision. Upon witnessing the scene, Wanda decides to react and uses her powers to immobilize the bearer of the Mind Jewel, causing him to sink several floors underground. With Chat GPT out of circulation, Clint says they should move on and takes the Scarlet Witch and Ant-Man to meet Captain America. Now that the group is together, an alert begins to sound and Bucky says that the airport is being evacuated, signaling that Tony is already nearby. Wanting to talk, Steve goes to Iron Man and tries to tell him that the psychiatrist is behind everything, but Stark doesn't believe him and asks Spider-Man to take the captain's shield. Tired of arguing, Tony says he wants to keep the Avengers together and asks Steve to turn himself in. But he refuses and gives the signal to Ant-Man, who suddenly grows up, kicks Peter and throws the shield back at the captain. Looking around, Tony sees Wanda and Clint running towards the hangar and decides to go after them. 
At that moment, Rhodes sees Bucky and the Falcon going the other way and the Black Panther decides to go after them, but is stopped by Captain America. Alone, Spider-Man manages to get to the pair and knocks Sam down with everything he's got, holding off a punch from Bucky straight after. While Peter deals with Falcon, War Machine and Black Panther go after Cap, who defends himself against them with his shield. Near the hangar, Tony reaches Clint who fires a magnetic arrow, causing the cars in the parking lot to crush Iron Man. At the terminal, Spider-Man manages to take down the Falcon and traps them both with his webs, but Sam manages to get one of his drones to take Peter away. After being knocked down by Black Widow, Ant-Man goes to Captain America and delivers a miniature truck that explodes near his enemies. Taking advantage of the distraction, Steve gets together with his group and runs towards the hangar, but Vision and the others show up to stop them. Face to face, the two groups of superheroes advance against each other and start exchanging punches, but Wanda is much more powerful than most of them and manages to knock out Natasha and T'Challa without much difficulty. Fighting alone, Spider-Man manages to take Captain America down by attacking his legs, but Steve is much more experienced in combat and manages to get the upper hand. To get rid of him quickly, Rogers drops a full container on Peter, forcing him to hold on to it while he flees. Nearby, Clint shoots an arrow that knocks Scott Lang into Tony's armor. Inside, Ant-Man begins to deactivate the weapon system and Stark turns on the fire suppression, sweeping Scott out of his armor. At that moment, Falcon says they're going to distract the Avengers and asks Bucky and Cap to go to the jet to face the real enemy. To serve as a distraction, Ant-Man uses the Pym particles to become a giant and starts attacking everyone at the same time, distracting everyone while the duo rush to the hangar. From above, Vision sees the duo trying to escape and reaches through Ant-Man's body to knock down the hangar entrance, but Wanda holds the rubble back with her powers. As soon as he realizes this, Rhodes fires a supersonic wave that knocks Wanda out of combat, almost crushing Buck and the captain. In front of the jet, Black Widow confirms that Steve wants to continue and begins to attack King T'Challa, allowing her friend to escape. In the center of the airport, Spider-Man uses his web to tie up Scott's legs, and he begins to lose his balance. To finish the fight, Tony and Rhodes fly in and knock Ant-Man out with one punch, causing Scott to fall on top of Peter Parker. After the battle, Stark goes to Spider-Man and asks him to go home, then flies after the jet. To stop them, Falcon flies after Rhodes, who asks for Vision's help, but the robot misses his target and hits Fighting Machine's core, causing him to fall. With the colonel falling, Tony and Falcon give up going after the fighter and fly down trying to help him, but they're not fast enough and Rhodes hits the ground, knocking himself unconscious. At the hospital, Tony talks to Vision about what happened, when he receives a priority upload from the Berlin police. As Stark flies over the ocean in his helicopter, Friday explains that the UN asked for a psychiatrist as soon as Bucky was captured, but it was Baron Zemo of the Sokovia forces who did the consulting. Curious, Stark asks what happened to the real psychiatrist and Friday replies that he was found lifeless in his apartment, along with a facial prosthesis with Bucky's face on it. Unaware that he has already been discovered, Zemo goes to the Siberian bunker where he finds five other frozen winter soldiers. In the middle of the ocean, Stark stops at Balsa, a prison hidden in the middle of the ocean that is controlled by Ross. On the spot, Tony tells him what he has discovered and the secretary completely ignores him, saying that he no longer trusts him. Unable to rely on the government, Stark goes to the cells and disables the audio system, taking the opportunity to tell Sam that he has discovered the whole truth. Wanting to help, Tony asks him to give him Steve's location and returns to his helicopter, which flies towards the mainland. Halfway there, Tony puts on his armor and ejects from the aircraft to fly towards Siberia, without realizing that the Black Panther is right behind him. At the same time, Steve and Bucky arrive at the bunker and start looking for the Baron. As they walk around the place, they hear someone approaching and their guard is up, even more so after realizing it's Iron Man. Now that he knows the truth, Tony says they can let their guard down and tells them he's there to help, joining them in the search for the Baron. In the center of the bunker, the three arrive in the chamber of the other Winter Soldiers and find them all already lifeless. As they approach, Zemo says he's glad they've come and tells them he's been studying them for a whole year. Face to face with the villain, Steve asks if he is seeking revenge for Sokovia and the Baron replies that he is not. Rogers then asks if he has lost anyone and Zemo replies that everyone he knew has been eliminated, saying that they will soon feel the same. The Baron then turns on a monitor in the center of the room and says that an empire is only defeated when it collapses from within. At that moment, security camera footage begins to show the Winter Soldier's mission in 1991. In the footage, Tony sees Bucky crashing his parents' car into a tree and then taking their lives, all to steal the case containing the super serum. On discovering that it was the soldier who took his parents' lives, 
Tony asks if Steve already knew and he replies that he did. Feeling betrayed, Stark knocks Captain America out and starts attacking Bucky while the Baron leaves. Thanks to his armor, Tony manages to knock down the Winter Soldier and almost rips his arm off, but Steve throws his shield to stop him. While fighting, they destroy part of the bunker, which begins to collapse. Taking advantage of the confusion, Steve asks Bucky to flee and stays behind to confront Tony, managing to damage one of his boots. Even so, the Iron Man continues to pursue Bucky and almost manages to finish him off, but Steve appears and knocks the projectile away with his shield. While Captain America tries to distract Tony, Barnes continues climbing to the exit of the fort, but Stark is determined to stop him and fires a rocket that breaks the hatch system, closing the passage. Now that Bucky has no way of escaping, Stark grabs him by the neck and starts to take him down, but Steve jumps on top of them and makes them both fall. On the ground, Captain America tries to calm things down and says that this won't change what happened, but Tony says he doesn't care and just wants revenge. Being alone against two, Iron Man ends up at a disadvantage and is cornered by Bucky who tries to remove the arc reactor, but Tony fires a blast of energy so strong that it destroys Barnes' vibranium arm. With his friend helpless, Steve goes after Tony while Zemo stays on the roof listening to his wife's latest message. As he listens to the looped audio, T'Challa appears and asks why he wants to make everyone fight. Zemo then replies that his father lived in an isolated area of Sokovia and that his wife and children took shelter in his house believing they were safe. When the fight against Ultron began, the man was extremely happy to see the Iron Man fighting before his eyes, but after the city collapsed, it took the Baron two days to find the bodies. Knowing he couldn't defeat them, Zemo planned everything to make them destroy themselves, which is exactly what is happening now. T'Challa then says he's tired of letting revenge consume people and stops the Baron from taking his own life. In the bunker, Iron Man analyzes Captain America's fighting pattern and finally manages to react, disarming Steve and starting the counterattack. Exhausted, Captain America says that Bucky is his friend and Tony replies that he was too, throwing a punch that leaves the former leader of the Avengers stunned. Even so, Steve doesn't give up and continues to attack Tony, using the shield to hit him until he breaks the arc reactor. Now that Stark doesn't have the energy to continue, Captain America picks up his shield and helps Bucky to his feet. Seeing this, Tony says that his father made the shield and that he doesn't deserve to use it, causing the captain to drop the vibranium disc. After everything, Tony returns to the Avengers compound where he receives a package. Upon opening the package, Stark finds a letter from Captain America apologizing for keeping his parents a secret, as well as a phone number for him to call whenever he needs help. While he finishes reading the message, Tony receives a call from Ross warning of a raid on the prison, indicating that Captain America and the Winter Soldier have rescued the trapped Avengers. With the rescue done, Bucky goes to Wakanda and asks to be frozen until they find a way to fix his mind, taking control away from Hydra. Once he's frozen, Steve goes to T'Challa and warns him that if the UN finds out, they'll come after him, but the King of Wakanda isn't intimidated and replies that he's looking forward to seeing them try. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.